Today is June 12th. It's about 7.30 in the morning and we have a little bit of time before the sun hits the garden. So let's take a look around. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Good morning and welcome to the first official garden tour of 2022. My name's Adrian, and this is my garden here in Southeast Michigan. We live in zone 6A. My last frost date is mid-May and my first frost date is generally around mid-October. We can start outside the garden. On this right side is a Ruth Stout bed full of potatoes from last year's harvest. Our potatoes did really bad last year. I didn't water them enough. And then they got early blight. I did not prepare the ground underneath this bed before I put the potatoes down. I wanted to just see what would happen. And although they're not thriving, they are growing. And I'm anxious to see what kind of harvest we'll get from that bed. I really enjoyed having a lot of flowers in my garden last year. And this year I planted even more. And I want to start incorporating some perennials into my garden design. This is Russian sage. And I've interplanted a variety of zinnias. I have rosemary here in this bed. This space is still open. I'm not sure what I'm going to put there. This corner, starting with that little section of bed, gets a lot of shade. This is a milkweed that I had in a pot the last two summers because I wasn't sure where I wanted to put it for forever. It seems to be doing really well being transplanted out here. I transplanted it very early spring. These are a couple of dahlias and this one got damaged by cutworms. I lost quite a few stems on that little bush. And it does seem to be coming back. It'll just take some time to catch up. I have zinnias planted all along this bed along with some onions. And these onions are not doing as well as some of the on other onions I have. And it's probably because this is a new bed this year and they just need more nutrients. I plan on side dressing them with some granular fertilizer this, this evening and giving them a good heavy dose of water and hopefully that'll make them happy. As you enter my garden there are purple pole beans climbing the arch trellis on both sides. I did sow some calendula in front and there are some coming up, but I've already lost some to slugs, so I'll just re-sow those. Most of my spring crops have finished up. A lot of them bolted this year because we had some really warm stretches of days but I do still have some cabbage and a couple of other things hanging on. Some of the cabbage wasn't looking great some of it was really small so I pulled those but the ones that I felt had the best chance of survival I left in here. And I'm pretty sure that's some cauliflower. I'm not really expecting a lot from this stuff and it'll most likely go to the chickens. 
I did interplant some peppers in this bed. I'll probably put some more zinnias in here and possibly some summer squash just because I have the space. Behind me is a row of hot peppers and some basil. This is a rosemary that I'm planning on putting somewhere else. I'm just not sure where yet, so it's just hanging out. Under this netting, I have some Brussels sprouts, some more kale, and then some more Brussels sprouts down at the end. This is a row of Kennebec potatoes, and I planted these traditionally, dug way down and then hilled. Uh, really early April I started those. I have four beds of potatoes this year. Two are Ruth Stout, two are traditional. This little patch of strawberries started as three plants last year. And I just love the way it rambles and spreads out. I've interplanted onions in there and along this little trellis is a sun gold, a blueberries cherry, and four tomatillos. This will be my first year growing tomatillos. Just have some more onions. I pulled most of my peas out. There are a couple little patches that I left that were looking really good. I don't think that I'm gonna get much off of them, but we'll see. This is a Dr. Wyke's tomato, my only Dr. Wyke's tomato in the entire garden. These are three eggplants, a Ping Tong, a Black Beauty, and an Antigua, although I have my doubts about this. I feel like this looks like a pepper and not an eggplant, which will be fine if it turns out to be a pepper. And these are volunteer ground cherries I'm not gonna leave all of the volunteer ground cherries. Here are more. I really wanted this space to be ground cherries and I let quite a few drop, but obviously I'll be thinning those out. I'm hoping to keep possibly two plants up here and since they dropped down there too, I might leave one down there. Here's some kale finishing up. And that's some marjoram that I picked up yesterday. A handful of peppers. I planted some echinacea this year. That one is a traditional echinacea. And this one is a prairie splendor and it's a little bit shorter and a little more compact than regular echinacea so that's going to look really pretty here's some kale finishing up it's getting kind of bitter now that it's getting warmer and i'm probably just going to end up giving that to the chickens i'm not sure what i'm going to do with this space when i pull that out uh, so i'll have to give that some thought this is purple sage that I picked up from the greenhouse yesterday. I am a sucker for anything purple plant related. And when I saw that, I had to get it. Calendula. I've got this one getting ready to bloom. I'm pretty sure this is the flashback mix from Johnny's Seed. Flanking this walkway are sweet peppers on both sides. Chamomile 
and some chives. In front of the gate, I planted some teddy bear sunflowers. My sour Mexican sour gherkin cucumbers are coming on. And these are the sugar magnolia tendril peas that have the wildest tendrils. But I don't think I have time for them to come to pod. And if they do, they'll probably be starchy because it'll be so warm. So I'm probably going to pull those out and give these sour gherkins as much space and sun as they can get. Here's some more of those little cucumbers. This is a rutabecchia and some wild thyme that dropped and volunteered from this basket up here. I don't know what this is. I picked this up at the greenhouse yesterday and just thought it was really cute. This is some Alaskan salmon nasturtium and a little purple ball basil. And that was a little strawberry that had come from a runner and it was in the middle of a path so I just popped it in there. These strawberries all around the bike actually came from runners from two plants that I had here where this nasturtium is and I could not be happier with how that turned out. It's so charming. Behind me is the garlic, my little garlic patch. And I've started harvesting scapes. And if you've never grown garlic, if you plant hardneck garlic, you'll actually get two harvests. You'll get to harvest these scapes, which are a really mild garlic, kind of oniony flavor. You just chop them up and saute them into anything. And it's something you can't just get at the grocery store. And to me, that just adds an extra layer of excitement that I can grow something so delicious that I can't get anywhere else. You want to harvest scapes just as they start to turn. And see this one's almost in a complete circle and they will keep circling. So these are ready. I'll probably come out here this evening and harvest the rest of the scapes. They just start to shoot out the center of that top, the top leaves, and they come out kind of straight to begin with. And what this would end up being is a flower pod that would then become the garlic seeds. You want to pull these scapes before they start to really circle you know, completely turn around because it's putting, the plant is putting a lot of energy into that scape to create the flower, to create the seeds. And you want that energy to go into creating that bulb for you. Across from the garlic bed is a trellis of eight paste tomatoes. I've got four Italian paste, and for Cordobu. The chamomile has really started to take off and get really full and bushy. Here is some purple basil, some opal basil, and I sowed a summer squash right there that's coming up. So cute. These two plants are a uh, small variety of zinnia called a jazzy zinnia and I'm guessing they're not going to get as tall and bushy. Hoping they'll do all right here close to that tomato plant. It should be fine. Back here are some calendula and two silver leaf sunflowers which is a branching variety with these really pretty unusual fuzzy leaves and they bloom all summer. They were really prolific 
last summer was my first summer having those. Along the row behind the tomatoes, this trellis of paste tomatoes, I sowed calendula, the flashback calendula mix, and it is all coming up. And now we're entering the expansion. This whole side is new this year. Last summer, we ran the chickens in this space for a few months and then in the fall we dropped mulched up leaves over this entire area probably four to six inches of leaves and that just settled in over the winter this spring i prepared the beds by hoeing out the walkways and piling the soil up into raised rows and then backfilled all of the walkways with more leaf mulch. As we come up to the cucumber trellis, there are jazzy zinnias to the right, cosmos, and a handful of onions to the left. On the left side, I planted green finger cucumber. And on this side, I have Armenian long which is my favorite cucumber. These are a variety of patty pan summer squash. And I popped in some mustard back here and some collard greens. Not sure how they're gonna tolerate the heat or how they'll taste. If they end up not being something we eat, I'll just give it to the chickens. I planted some more chamomile back here. This is a little patch of celery. And down the center of the row are some onions. And that is a bunch of bok choy that is, as you can see, flowering. Once they flower, they're pretty much done. So I'll be pulling this out and re-sewing something in its place. All along the fence line back here, I have leeks, and this is the first year I'm growing leeks. I think they're looking pretty good. They're growing slowly, but they are growing. This is two plants of a cue ball summer squash called Desi squash. This is a little patch of holy basil sprouting, some more of that salmon nasturtium, more zinnias. I have three semi-determinate tomatoes here called Thornburg's terracotta, and they're an unusual, delicious tomato. I started some more sage here. I do have a really beautiful, mature sage plant that we'll check out in a minute and i just wanted to have some more somewhere else so i put some back here this is a white borage doing really well i sowed cosmos in this space last week and that's coming up and this little patch of flowers are snapdragons i started 250 snapdragon seeds and this is all that survived so i need to get better at growing snapdragons i put a rondonie squash here which is another cue ball summer squash variety and that's what i have going on over here as well this one never germinated I did re-sew it, it's just not up yet. This is a little patch of teddy bear sunflowers and right behind it, in between these mammoths and the teddy bear sunflowers, I sewed parsley. This is a little group of those silver leaf sunflowers that I enjoyed so much last year. On this side, I have some poblano peppers, more of that opal basil, 
and a little row of celery. These are some sugar baby watermelons and across from them I planted some midget melon which is a personal size cantaloupe. More white borage and I have two TP trellises this year and down the center of both I planted some globo onions. This side of the TP trellis will be cucumbers. That is a Parisian pickling and I had a muncher coming up here and something ate it so I re-sewed those. Another Yeti nasturtium and the other day a rabbit got in here. I didn't have the fence on. It came in and had a delicious snack of all the lower leaves of my purple potted pole beans that were crawling up the trellis. I did re-sew them because I don't know if they'll pull through. I mean, some of them, you can see where the bunny didn't reach up very high. We've got some high leaves left, but a couple of these plants are just little stems. This teepee trellis is winter squash. I started buttercup on this side and de la cotta over there. Oh wow! I didn't realize this had bloomed. This is the Yeti nasturtium, that yellow, soft yellow blossom. That's exciting. And right next to that are two moon and stars melons. These are watermelons. The watermelons themselves have yellow spots all over them, which is why they're called moon and stars. And their leaves are also spotted with that same pattern. It's so cute. And then over on that side is another midget melon. And I feel like that little sprout is another sugar baby, which is just a small, regular watermelon. These are pro-cut sunflowers, and that bunny had a couple of sunflowers for its snack as well. A couple more pro-cut sunflowers here, and another bunny snack. That's as far as he got, and hopefully he won't be back. This is a winter squash variety called Honey Nut, which is a miniature butternut. On this side of the trellis, I started some Chinese red noodle beans, which is an amazing Asian lung. They are slow to start, which is why I didn't put them on the entrance trellis this year. These are mammoth sunflowers. And back behind the bike, you can see there's an early girl tomato there. And this is a sweetheart cherry tomato. And I'm hoping they're going to get enough sun back there. The Chinese red noodle beans are slow to start. And they do stay kind of sparse as they climb up the trellis. They're not as full as the purple beans. So I'm hoping that that's gonna allow enough sun to filter through and give those tomatoes what they need back there. Here are my last two rows of potatoes. This is a golden butterball or a German butterball variety. And this is the Ruth Stout bed. compared to the traditionally planted bed. And obviously the traditionally planted bed is doing much better than the Ruth Stout. It's just more full. The Ruth Stout bed certainly has major advantages over this traditionally dug bed. I literally laid these potatoes out, put some leaf mulch on it, covered it with a bale of straw. 
This bed took me half an afternoon to plant. I'm probably over exaggerating, but it was way more time consuming than this Ruth Stout bed. And I think it's gonna be a decent harvest. I find so much value in growing in containers. It's where I started. It's where a lot of people start. Some things have to be in containers. I've got a couple of pots of mint. Uh, this is a chocolate mint. And those are just some violas I popped in there for some color. And then I have some spearmint and peppermint in this pot. Spearmint, peppermint, any kind of mint will just take over literally take over your space and i know people will tell you that and you're thinking how is that possible I'll just pull it out if i don't want it anymore and it's really not possible lemon balm will do the same thing and that's what i have started in this pot you can control the growing conditions a lot more if you're growing in containers these are some onions that need to get in the ground and I'm most likely going to be planting a lot of these this afternoon. I have such terrible luck growing bush beans. There's some little bugs on there and I really was giving up on bush beans. I was not going to grow any this year and I decided to try growing some in containers and this is a kalima bean which is a, like a French style bean, a long slender French style bean. M amazing flavor and I'm so excited because they're doing so well in containers. This is the best bush beans have ever done in my care and I'm really excited. This is an atomic grape. I'm not sure what that one is. I believe this is a blueberries cherry. It just looks like that kind of stem. This I know is a sun gold. I put some very small orange pepper seedlings in here with a calendula. This is a black beauty eggplant. And I've got a variety of herbs started in all of these pots. This is a Roma style tomato called Cipolla. And I sowed some herbs around it. Parsley, basil, and some bunching onions. These are three jalapeno peppers back here in this fabric pot. And I'm so excited to have dwarf tomatoes. This is an orange hat and look, oh my gosh, there's a baby. That's so cute, so cute. Of everything that I started this year, I think the dwarf tomatoes had me most excited about the gardening season starting. That's some basil, some bunching onions, this is an Aristotle basil, like a ball basil variety with those tiny little leaves. Dragon tongue bush beans and more Kalima beans in here. This tier is full of hot peppers and some more of those orange hat dwarf tomatoes. So cute and they're just so healthy. The plants are really stocky and just really fun. This is a Better Boy tomato. I had this really large pot and thought I'd try a slicer tomato in there. Another chamomile, some Swiss chard, and a zucchini up here. This is just a traditional zucchini. Some rosemary, and I intentionally put some rosemary in containers because I plan on taking those inside to overwinter this year. And here is another container of Kalima beans. So impressive how well, well they're doing. I'm just really excited about having some of those Kalima beans. They are so good. This little strawberry patch started as just one row of strawberry plants. I pinched all the blossoms off last year and just let their runners go where they wanted to and it is becoming this rambly charming little strawberry patch and I love it. We've been getting handfuls of strawberries every day. It's just so cool to come out in the yard and get food. Here are some peas hanging on, but they're pretty much done. 
a sun gold tomato and some white borage. This is some basil coming up. I'm not sure which is which, but I know I have a super sweet tomato, a pork chop, and an atomic grape. Not sure in what order those are, but that's what I've got going on back here, as well as some peppers. This silver leaf sunflower got munched on. There were a couple of nights that the electric fence was shorting out, and one of those nights something came in here and dug a few things up. Nothing devastating, but it did eat that top of that sunflower. And I almost pulled it out, but I'm so glad I didn't because it's doing pretty good. It would have been up here with this guy. They were transplanted over here at the same time. This is exciting. I have teddy bear sunflowers coming up. In the center, I sowed some cosmos, and there's a small line of dill. I know the sun's coming up, so it's kind of hard to see, but I forgot I sowed dill here and then sowed okra. So I'm thinking about grabbing handfuls of this dill and popping it in elsewhere to give that okra this space because I don't think they're both going to thrive together and I want them both to thrive. A little line of lemon basil next to a variety of peppers, some calendula that's just doing really great and two sepola tomatoes and a volunteer tomato to be determined as to the variety and i don't know if it's going to stay there or if i'm going to move it it might be okay there and i'll give it a little support we're getting into the three rows of tomatoes and down every row i've interplanted onions behind the tomatoes I have not memorized all the varieties yet, but I do have a few hybrids mixed in this year. I've got some beefsteak in here, some Jetstar. In the coming weeks, as I'm updating you through these regular weekly garden tours, I will share more details about the varieties I'm growing. But I did come through here yesterday and prune all the tomato plants finally we've had so much rain and i didn't want to prune when it was going to rain which ended up being pretty much every other day and they finally got a good pruning yesterday pretty sure this is a paul robeson i know that this little guy is a pork chop because he was cut down by a cutworm early in spring i Put him in a cup of water for a couple of weeks and let it root out put it into some soil in a cup for a couple of weeks and now finally brought him back out to the garden and it's doing really well some of these tomato plants have been in here a good bit already i took a chance and transplanted some of these really early hoping we would not get a late frost and we did not I did have some backup plants just in case, but it all worked out. This first half of this trellis, this middle trellis, is more of those cordobu paste tomatoes. Before I get too far, let's talk about this bed back here. My oregano overwinters in my zone. It is coming into its third summer and it is just a beast. I've had to cut it back significantly because it was strangling my thyme and my thyme is my favorite. My plan is to just keep it trimmed back to allow the thyme to have enough space, but I may consider moving this thyme over a little bit to allow that oregano to spread out a little bit more. This is a better boy tomato plant, a ping tongue eggplant, and a purple pepper. 
more chamomile and more calendula. I had several plants taken out by cutworms, so I did sow some more calendula seeds here to fill those spaces in. My parsley overwinters here. My chives come back. This red Russian kale will probably go to the chickens. More time. M more of that cute little Aristotle basil, the tiny leafed ball basil. Just grows in these cute little mounds. This is a Paul Robeson with some wild thyme. Behind me is some Chinese chives. This first row of tomatoes, I also started pretty early transplanting these out, but I lost a lot of this row to cutworms, so you'll see that several of these plants are much smaller. but they're doing really good. On this side, behind this trellis, I have purple opal basil and then just sowed some lemon basil to interplant with that. And then here on this arch will be Lufa. I have one plant on this side and two over here. And of the three, this one is doing the best. This one is looking really good. This is my first time growing Lufa. Another of those Yeti nasturtium and there's another bloom. How cute. I hope you enjoyed my garden tour. I loved showing you around. I will be posting weekly garden tours to keep you updated on all the progress of everything I have growing. And I'm really excited to share this season with you.